gentlemen, and happy Thursday. We are within 10 days of Christmas, and yet we have had probably one of the most active Decembers on record. First off, we had a massive and deadly tornado outbreak that occurred last Friday, December 10th, 2021, overnight into the morning hours of December 11th. And last night, we had our second name winter storm of the season, winter storm Banks, and that brought one of the most active severe weather outbreaks to the por to portions of the northern and central plains. But let's go ahead and first talk about this. As you can tell, we have a lot to get to, and I actually have a lot to share with you um, concerning last Friday's tornado outbreak. Um, I have a little uh, script here that I put together for this video. Unfortunately, more than 20 tornadoes have been now confirmed, with many surveys still far from being over. Unfortunately, 87 people now have lost their lives, which is just absolutely devastating to think that, you know, this is right before Christmas. But thankfully, a massive effort is ongoing that, you know, is really in the hardest hit areas. Obviously, the tornado outbreak took place last Friday night on December 10th, 2021, and is now the deadliest tornado outbreak to take place in the current decade we are in, in the United States of America. And unfortunately, one of these storms that was included in this outbreak was on the ground for more than 250 miles. Think about that, 250 miles an hour. That is just insane, in my opinion. One of the hardest hit locations within this outbreak includes the city of Mayfield, Kentucky, that is in the southwestern portion of the state, where homes and businesses were absolutely leveled to the ground, with really only a couple of structures still standing. And unfortunately, officials say that only 40 out of 100 workers at the Mayfield Consumer Products have been rescued, which is just devastating to hear. The National Weather Service has been surveying the damage all week in Mayfield and the surrounding areas surrounding Mayfield and have found at least high-end EF4 damage while the tornado was still on the ground for just under uh, 130 miles. And I think the actual total length of the storm was impacting locations was actually 164 miles, which is just insane in my opinion. And, uh, and also, I would assume that most of you have been, uh, have been hearing about this on the news over the last several days and, and have heard um, some of the stories from the people that thankfully um, did survive um, the storm, you know, that night that it happened. And really, honestly, every time I hear one of those stories, I tear up and I just go right to my family members and just, you know, uh, tell them how thankful I am that I'll be able to spend the holidays with them, considering a lot of people um, that lost their lives with the storm will, you know, really not be able to spend as much time with their family members at all. And please let this be a reminder that even though this event is uh, extremely rare to see at this time of year, and considering how long the uh, tornado was on the ground and how extensive the damage was, I mean, this is a you know event that we would typically see within the, within the spring or the summertime, and even more than that, it took place you know two weeks before Christmas in the middle of December. I mean, this is a this is a typically summertime event where the where the climate is much different, and we have a lot more humid air. And the time is right for severe weather. This happened two weeks before Christmas in the middle of December. So please let this be a bell ringer to you that even those extreme and devastating weather events can happen any time of the year. And that every single one of us needs to be expected or needs to be prepared for whatever Mother Nature throws at us. So those are just a couple of things that I wrote down that I wanted to share with you. It's just devastating to hear, you know, two weeks before Christmas, we had one of the most dangerous and devastating tornado outbreaks in the last decade. Now, as I mentioned, they have got they haven't got an official rating yet, but the preliminary uh, the by, uh, the preliminary discussions that the National Weather Service is currently having says that it has to be at least an EF four, indicating that there was winds of around one hundred and sixty six to two hundred miles per hour. Can you imagine that one hundred and sixty six to two hundred miles an hour potential gusts over two hundred miles per hour? That is just insane to think in my mind. Two weeks before Christmas, in the middle of December. Wow. Now, this picture gets me every single time. Here's a look at the radar at the time that the tornado was currently affecting the city of Mayfield, one of the hardest hit areas that got affected, that got affected by this tornado. Look at the debris going all the way up into the air, almost 30,000 feet up into the air. Can you imagine that? Debris being lifted from this tornado 30,000 feet into the air. Wow. If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what does, honestly. Here's a look at the exact track that it took, going all the way from Fulton County, unfortunately slamming um, Mayfield County at around uh, 9.30 p.m., going into Caldwell County right at around 10.30 p.m., and then thankfully finishing off as we head towards 11 o'clock. But as you can tell, this was a nighttime tornado, and we all know that those tornadoes are the most deadly 
because the only way we can try and go outside and confirm or see them is if, if, it, is if they're accompanied by frequent lightning in the distance. And thankfully, we did have a lot of that considering how strong these storms were. But, you know, even at nighttime, these tornadoes can be absolutely devastating, not to mention the power that this storm really had behind its back. Now, thankfully, that storm was well out of the area. But last night, we did have another severe weather outbreak, and that was brought by our brand new winter storm, which is Winter Storm Banks Center. It started over here across these portions of the Four Corners region and brought a lot of snow um, to portions of the higher elevations in California. It headed eastward and brought extremely strong uh, storms to portions of the central and northern plains, into portions of northern Iowa, and also into portions of um, southern Minnesota. And thankfully, here across the eastern coast, we have been mainly dry and that is thanks to an area of high pressure that has been basically dominating our region throughout this whole entire week. Unfortunately, though, the nice weather will not stay long as we have another front that will be heading into our area as we head towards the end of this weekend. Here's a, here's a look at a, um, a, a, a tornado that was reported last night within last night's severe weather outbreak. This is in Iowa, and you can see there's the funnel right there. There is the rotating shelf cloud right there. And once again, there's the funnel cloud right there. Plenty of lightning um, within this uh, within the supercell. So this is a very dangerous situation and honestly a very eerie and just you know very scary picture to look at. Here's a, here's a look at some of the uh, peak wind gusts that we saw within um, the storm last night topping out at 101 miles an hour, two miles south southwest at Mantano Springs. Wow, Colorado Springs topping out at 93 at the airport 92 miles an hour as you head towards Fort Carson Airport, topping out just above 80 miles an hour as you head south towards Colorado Springs across portions of the Fort Corners region. You're looking at wind gusts anywhere in the mid-70s, and then thankfully, as you head towards uh, the bottom of the list, those uh, winds do somewhat start to get lighter if you want to say anything at all. Now, coming up, your forecast for the rest of this weekend. So even though we have had a very active week, you would think that Mother Nature would give us you know, somewhat of a break and bring in nice weather this weekend. Unfortunately, it is not going to do that. We have the leading edge of the cold front that came through last night stalling across portions of the deep south that just got hit by that very dangerous tornado outbreak. As you can see, overnight tonight, we're looking at a very good shot of rain anywhere from northeastern Arkansas across portions of western Kentucky and Tennessee and then up eventually into the Ohio Valley. As we head to tomorrow, look at this. Hardly any change at all. A little change eastward, but we're still looking at a very good shot of rain. And once again, anywhere across portions of the, of the northern Mississippi Valley, all the way up into the Ohio Valley. Now, things do start to get, um, things do start to change as we head into Saturday's setup. But unfortunately, they only get worse. An area of low pressure actually comes down from Canada, if my graphic wants to load. There we go. As you just saw, an area of low pressure does come down from Canada and brings us a very good shot of rain, potentially even a chance for a strong to severe storm, which is just honestly the last thing that this area needs, but very heavy rain across the areas that were just very heavily affected by that tornado outbreak. And thankfully in our area, we actually do need some rain. And thankfully it will be shifting towards our area as we head into the end of the weekend. But thankfully clearing out of this area, which we definitely do not need any more rain in the area in order to clean up all the damage that was um, made by that deadly tornado outbreak. As we, look for, as we look towards our weekend, our, really our only big day of rain is going to be this Sunday when that, when, uh, when that cold front comes through. It will drop our temperatures from the 70s on Saturday all the way down to the mid-50s on Monday. And then our next shot of rain comes on Tuesday. But thankfully, all the weather will clear out as Santa Claus himself comes in across portions of our area as we head into Saturday. And thankfully, really not that much change as you head more inland. Our best shot of rain is going to be Sunday when that leading edge of that cold front comes through. It will bring our temperatures down from the mid-70s on Saturday down into the low to mid-50s on Sunday. But thankfully, the weather clears out as we head towards Christmas.